Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. On this channel, I talk about lead code system design and general fund day related to life and career. So today we'll be talking about consistent hashing uh, in our system design series. So in the introduction video, we talked about load balances and one of the problems load balances have to deal with is how to decide which server to choose. Let's say we have a stateless system and if you have any uh, problems in understanding all these terms, I would recommend go and check out my introduction to system design video. So in that case, a load balancer has to decide uh, which server to choose. Let's say we have three servers, server one, server two, server three. And uh, this is our load balancer and it has to decide, okay, which server to send the request to. Uh, one of the ways um, is to just um, take a hash uh, of the request ID and take a modulo of N. And by that, let's say we have request IDs whose hash can range from one to six. So just for the demonstration purposes. So this request will go to server one, this request will go to server two, this will go to server three, this will again go to one because four modulo three is equal to one. This will go to server two, this will go to server three. So the problem with traditional hashing is that, so this is for all the request IDs whose hash hash function is equal to one is going to server one. Now problem with this approach is let's say if what if n changes the number of server changes let's say if we add a server or we delete a server uh, let's consider the case if we add the server so now let's say we have four servers these are the original mappings original mappings now let's say after we have four servers this will go to server one this will go to server three this will go to server four and then this will go to one this will go to server two so Basically, all the requests which were earlier going to server one are now, are now going to server four. So all the data of all the people whose hash is four, so all the request IDs whose hash is four, earlier they did their data was on server one. Now the data has to be moved from server one to server four. Similarly, all the people whose hash is five, their data has to move to server two to server one. Similarly, all the people who, whose hash is six, their data has to be moved from server three to server two. So the problem with traditional approach is if we add a server or remove a server, we have to do move a lots of data and moving the data across servers is a very expensive and painful procedure. It might also include downtime or even if it does not include downtime, it's very uh, has to be handled very carefully to prevent the downtime and then it's also very expensive in terms of time and money. Another problem with this approach is let's say there are many more people whose hash value turns out to be 1 and very few people whose hash turns out to be 2. So in this case server 1 will be kind of overpopulated and server 2 would be underused and it will not be an equal load balancing and that's why we will have a non-uniform distribution of requests. So, so the first drawback is that we have to move a lot of data, it's expensive both in terms of time and money, may lead to downtime and then even if we don't have to move the distribution of data across the service might not be uniform and that's why we normally do not use traditional hashing we use a different form of hashing called consistent hashing and let's look into it. So let's say the output of our hash function uh, belongs to 0 to 360. Um, now what we do is in consistent hashing is we map some range from this uh, you can say range space or the possible values of hash function. So we divide this across 
different servers as follows so for example server 1 will uh, handle all the requests whose hash is between 0 to 90 server 2 will handle all requests whose hash is from 90 to 180 server 3 will handle all requests whose hash is from 180 to 70 and 4 will handle all requests whose hash is from 270 to 360 the advantage of this is that in the previous scenario let's say if we had more servers here let's say we had 7 8 9 7 would have moved to like from 1 it has had moved to um, 3 from 2 it had moved to 4 from 3 it had moved to 1 so all the subsequent values uh, had to be moved to different servers which would be a lot of move if we had let's say 360 servers all of them would have to be moved so let's see now how this amount of movement is reduced when we use consistent hashing so each server is mapped to some range and then for a given key or id we take its hash let's say hash function gives us value of 183 so we find in this ring you can imagine this a ring as shown in the diagram where does this 183 lies 183 lies somewhere here so we move clockwise in this ring and whichever is the first server in the ring that server will handle our request so in our case server 3 will handle our request for another example let's say we get 275 so 275 will lie somewhere here and uh, in that case server 4 will handle our request so that's how consistent hashing works and now let's see what happens if we add or remove a server so now let's say if we added a new server let's say server 5 and we gave server 5 the new range from 0 to 45 now what happens is only the data corresponding to the keys 0 to 45 which were earlier being handled by node 1 has to be moved from node 1 to node 5 because earlier these this range was assigned to node 1 because node 1 was the first node in the clockwise direction in this ring now the first node is node 5 so only these keys have to be moved and and in traditional approach as i showed that all of the keys had to be moved beyond a certain point so the number of keys or the number of uh, request IDs for which we have to move the data to a different server has been minimized and and in this example we are kind of using very few servers and that's why this range might be looking still very large but in practice we use a lot of servers and this range is very uh, minute similarly let's say if we delete a node or if let's say a node failure happens due to a network failure or a hardware failure or we need we want that we saw that node 1 is kind of slow so we want to re like remove node 1 from the system or whatever be the case in that case what happens is all the requests which were being handled by node 1 now has to be handled by node 2 because all this for all these requests between 0 to 90 the first server in the clockwise direction is server 2 and that's why all the all the data for keys 0 to 19 need to be moved from node 1 to node 2 and still the data moved is very less compared to the traditional approach because in traditional approach uh, let's say you had hash map from 1 to 360 and original mapping for four servers would be 1 2 3 4 5 sorry one two three four and then one two three four something like that and in the new case where only there are three servers we'll have one two three one two three one two three so you can see apart from these first three mappings all the mappings have to be changed so that's why the amount of data moved in this kind of approach is very less now coming to the second problem we discussed in the traditional approach which was what if some keys are more frequent than the other keys like some hash values are more frequent for example uh, like we discussed earlier let's say we have six possible hash values what if one is one occurs three times in a minute 
and two occurs only two times in a minute so so you can see that um, the hash values are very um, unevenly distributed and how to handle those case so to handle that case what we do is instead of assigning only one range to a particular server we assign multiple ranges to a particular server so each real node is assigned a multiple range for example in this case as you can see server 1 is assigned this range then server 1 is also assigned this range then server 1 is also assigned this range here so although we the real node or you can say in reality we have only one server server 1 but on this hash ring we have kind of three servers or three nodes and we call those virtual nodes because all those virtual nodes are kind of placeholders for a real server like actual request will eventually go to server 1 it's just we are uh, considering them as three different nodes from this theoretical perspective of this ring that's why we sometimes use this word called virtual nodes so we have three virtual nodes for s1 s1.1 one. S1 one, s1.2 s1.3 you can mark them like this s1.1 now how does it help uh, in terms of hot keys uh, it helps because uh, now let's say all the requests which were going to server 1 like if this one was a hotkey and all the requests were going to server 1 now let's say there is another hotkey 4 and uh, this also happens very frequently now let's say this was also going to server 1 but what what we can do is uh, now since we have virtual nodes we can insert a node virtually such that um, server 2 handle some of the requests so between 3 and 4 so in the hash ring between 3 and 4 we can add a virtual node of server 2 because we realized okay server 2 is not being used that much and so some of the requests which were coming to server 4 have been are now being handled by server 2 and we can determine the placement of the a virtual node based on how much load a particular server is getting so in this example uh, let's say we determine that okay server 2 is uh, very less used but server 1 is overpopulated so what we can do is we can add a virtual node of server 2 here and it's not very clear from the diagram so basically we can add a virtual node of server 2 somewhere in between in this ring and we can say all this mapping from here to here let's say we edit the server to here in this ring so all the mapping from here to here will now be handled by server 2 because server 2 was kind of free we added a new virtual node for server 2 and server 1 will only handle requests from this range from here to here so we can take those decisions based on which server is being used so we can add and remove virtual nodes easily to handle the hotkey problem and whenever we add or remove virtual nodes for example if we added uh, virtual node of server 2 so all these keys all these keys which were originally present in server 1 have to be moved from server 1 to server 1 to server 2 but still they are like far less keys rather uh, compared to the total key space from 0 to 360 so consistent hash hashing is used in a lot of places Consistent hashing is often used in many databases to determine which servers or database servers will hold the data. Consistent hashing can also be used in distributed caching, distributed caches. So let's say instead of a single cache, we have multiple application servers, one, two, three, four, and it's a stateless system it uses some kind of caching and instead of using a single cache it uses a group of cache nodes cache 1 cache 2 cache 3 cache 4 so these are application servers and this is distributed cache we'll talk more about caching in one of the later videos so now to determine which cache holds the value of a particular 
uh, person, let's say user. So all these servers will use the same hash function to find the hash of the user ID. And then it will see, let's say we use consistent hashing between these cache servers. It will see, okay, where does that hash ID lies? Let's say that hash ID lies here. It will go to um, cache, cache server three and it will get the data from there. And if we want to add or remove cache, cache servers, we can do uh, it's sim similar to what we described earlier. So it can be used in caching, it can be used in databases, it can also be used in general for application servers as well. So consistent hashing is a very generic concept used in a lot of places in system design and we'll be referring to consistent hashing when we'll be discussing a lot of systems in the future. So I hope you like this video, if you liked it, Please subscribe my channel. I'll be creating more videos soon in this series of system design and stay tuned. See you.